In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this morning, we're going to have a, a shorter message than usual, since we're going to have the, the meeting later on. And uh, it's going to be focused on uh, today's uh, Gospel reading. So today's message um, is part of a larger discourse given by Jesus. What's happening in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus had just chosen the 12 apostles, and then he gives uh, this discourse to the, uh, to the disciples and to those people who are gathered with him. It begins with discussion of Luke's version of the Beatitudes. Uh, they are a shorter version of the Beatitudes listed in Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. Uh, some Bible critics attempt to use the differences recorded in Jesus' versions of uh, different sayings and discourses that he gives uh, to discredit the valid validity of the New Testament to both his teaching and his ministry. We actually have a very small sample of what Jesus did and said. At the end of St. John's Gospel, he writes, and there are also many other things which Jesus said and did, which have been written in detail, I suppose, even that the whole world itself would not contain the books that were written. The Holy Spirit directed the Gospel writers to record what we need to know and what we need to understand to believe that Jesus is the incarnate Son of God and how he desires for us to live in a manner that's pleasing to him. So in his the three-year ministry that he had on earth, he spoke daily. Some of his teachings, particularly the parables, are very similar, but other passages, like today's passage, um, have differences from one gospel writer to another, from one message delivered to another. So the different messages we're giving at different times. Uh, the context may be similar, but the words were given at different times and different places. So not all, of, not all the passages that we have are going to be exactly the same. The discourse that today's gospel is in came from is very similar to Matthew's Sermon on the Mount but it is much shorter. And Luke does, does tell us that the message was not given on the mount, it was given on a plane. So it was given at a different time, but similar themes to the Sermon on the Mount, but in a shorter context. And this is also referred to as the Sermon on the Plain. It may have been part of a, part of a longer discourse, we don't know, but we are given what Luke, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, recorded for us. And the Church Fathers chose to highlight five of those verses of Five of the 29 verses uh, that uh, Luke recorded of Jesus' discourse. As I said, it begins with a shortened version of the Beatitudes. And then Jesus gives a list of woes to those who are rich, well-fed, and content with their life, but neglect helping those who are in need. And he tells them that all the material benefits that they have, and that are trusting it for their comfort, will be taken away from them, and then they will mourn. And as in this Sermon on the Mount, Jesus instructs people to love and to pray for their enemies and those who mistreat him. And he gives the instruction, also in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, that we are slapped in the face, turning our other cheek. And in this, he is telling us to learn humility. And getting slapped in the face is one of the most humiliating acts that you can endure. But we are not to retaliate, we are to turn the other cheek, to demonstrate and learn humility. And the lessons of humility are always very difficult. Our humility is also linked to our generosity, for Jesus immediately after this tells us to give to anyone who asks and not to demand anything back from them. And then he speaks about today's passage. He says, treat others the same way you want them to treat you. So this has come down to us as the golden rule. The golden rule is actually a, a principle that should govern all of our life. If we can live the golden rule perfectly, we would need little else to guide us in our daily living. But as we have mentioned in the past, Jesus always takes uh, these simple sayings, these simple teachings, and raises them to a higher level. So we're not only to keep from doing things uh, that we do not want others to do to us, but we are to actively seek to do good to others. Our goodness must surpass that of the world. And Jesus uses three examples to illustrate this. He says, if we love those that love us, what credit is that to us? For even sinners, love those that love them. And if we, do good to, if we do good to those who do good to us, again, what credit is that? For even sinners often do good to those who are good to them. And if we lend to others expecting what we get back what we lent, we are not doing anything other than what sinners and people in the world do. They lend, lend expecting to get back what they lend. So in, in seeking to do good to others, we are called to go beyond what the world would do. Jesus is saying we have to raise the bar, raise the bar. We are called to love our enemies, to do good to them, 
and to lend, not expecting anything in return. If we ever do these things, we're living beyond what the world would expect from its own people. Jesus also tells us that our reward will be great. I do not think he's teaching us to be seeking rewards by doing good. Our motivation should be to seek to please the Lord, to follow the example of Christ, and to grow in theosis. In doing good to others, that itself is our reward. If we strive to do these things, we can become more godlike. We are able to seek, see men as God sees men, and to treat men as God would like us to treat them. For Jesus says that our Father is kind to the ungrateful and evil people. He sends rain and sunshine upon the good and the evil. We have to treat people with the same type of non-judgmental towards them. But as we go forth from today, let us seek ways in which we can do good to all men, to show mercy to all. But this is how God treats each and every person he has created. And we're called to do likewise and be as our Heavenly Father. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, unto the ages of ages. Amen.